Good day and welcome to Leaders Live, our weekly program every Sunday. It's my joy to share with you the gospel. It's always been my joy to share my heart with you and share the gospel, the plan of God. And I believe that in these days, it's important for us to consider the truth of the gospel and to be able to understand, to know in the spirit, the plan, the vision of the Lord Jesus Christ as he's building his church. We want to be part of it. We don't want to work in vain. We don't want to, year after year, preach the gospel, do so many things, organize so many things, and yet, doing all that, we can still be working in vain. That's why I'm happy to share with you. I'm happy to share with you the gospel so that you can be encouraged and if there is anything that needs to be changed, we need to open our hearts and accept. Accept to change, accept to restore things that need to be restored. And if the Lord confronts us, we give thanks to Him. We praise Him. We are learning. We are all learning every day, every week, about how to serve the Lord efficiently. That's the purpose of us meeting every Sunday and to share the gospel with you. So I pray that the Lord will bless you, will reveal to you his plan. Amen. So today I would like to speak to you about the pastor and his finances. And his finances. The pastor and his finances. To that effect, I would like to share with you two important aspects of this sharing with you. First of all, what should be the salary of a pastor? Should he receive money from the church? What? What does the Bible say? I believe it's very clear. In... in the first letter to the Corinthians, Corinthians, the Apostle Paul speaks about that nearly in the whole chapter. Nearly. But we are going to read from verse 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. We read from verse 1. It's going to be very interesting. Am I not an apostle? Question. That's the Apostle Paul talking. Am I not free? Have I not seen Jesus Christ our Lord? Are you not my work in the Lord? If I am not an apostle to others, yet doubtless I am to you. For you are the seal of my apostleship in the Lord. My defense to those who examine me is this. Do we have no right to eat and drink? Do we have no right to take along a believing wife, as do also the other apostles, the brothers of the Lord, and Cephas? Or is it only Barnabas and I who have no right to refrain from working? Whoever goes to war at his own expense, whoever goes to war at his, to war at his own expense, who plants a vineyard? and does not eat of its fruit? Or who tends a flock and does not drink of the milk of the flock? Do I say these things as a mere man? Or does not the law say the same also? For it is written in the law of Moses, you shall not muzzle an ox while it treads out the grain. Is it oxen God is concerned about? Or does he say it all together for our sakes? 
In other words, does the Lord mention these things in the law of Moses because of the ox? No. Paul says, he says it all together for our sakes. For our sakes, no doubt, this is written that he who plows should plow in hope. And he who threshes in hope should be partaker of his hope. Verse 11. If we have sown spiritual things for you, it is a great thing if we reap your material things. If others are partakers of this right over you, are we not even more? Nevertheless, we have not used this right. We have not used this right, but endure all things, lest we hinder the gospel of Christ. Do you not know that those who minister the holy things eat of the things of the temple? And those who serve at the altar partake of the offering of the altar? Even so, the Lord has commanded that those who preach the gospel should leave from the gospel. I will stop there for the moment. When we hear what Paul has to say, we understand that there is here a general rule. And what is it? Paul says that those who preach the gospel should leave from the gospel. After giving many examples in the natural and from the Old Testament, He concludes by saying, those who preach the gospel, that's what he says in verse 14, should leave from the gospel. So that's a general rule. Amen? That's a general rule. So, the pastor is able to receive a salary from the local church. Amen? There's nothing wrong in that. It's normal. When we read the Word of God, it is absolutely normal for a pastor to receive a salary from the local church. But the problem starts when There is an excess where the pastor encourages, asks, preaches about giving to the people of God constantly, day after day, Week after week, there is like a burden that is put on the people of God. And at the end of the day, the people fear the pastor if they do not respond or obey what the pastor does or asks them. And this is very sad because a Christian needs to be able to give freely according to what he desires in his heart. All Christians are not at the same spiritual state or level. There are those who are still weak and who are growing and they want to give according to the desires of their heart freely. But there are many attitudes that are not right. I have to say it in the hearts of many pastors who use these verses excessively so that they can gain from it. They can have, they can profit from him, from it, from that part of scripture. And they preach about money 
That's why I always say that the prosperity message has changed the heart of many pastors or pastors have only known about the prosperity gospel and for them to ask excessively to the Christians to give so that they can prosper has become normal for them. But that's not the heart of the Lord. That's not the right attitude of heart. Paul had the right to receive money from the local church of Corinth because he was serving the people of Corinth. But he decided not to. So am I saying that you should not have a salary? No, 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 you should. It's normal. It's normal. You invest in the spirit and you can reap temporal things. It's normal. That's a general rule. But we have seen that pastors exaggerate. They do exaggerate. By asking and asking and asking. So that they may themselves prosper. Have more. Multiply. Because it has become part of them. But that's not the attitude that we shall have. People need to give freely and out of their giving the pastor takes a reasonable salary. He doesn't have to take everything. Maybe after paying the rent of the place that they are renting or paying the electricity bill for the church and the rest is for them. I don't think that's the right attitude of heart. I don't think that's the heart of the Lord. I don't think so at all. I think that the pastor should have a decent, reasonable salary. And whatever is left is for the spreading of the gospel. He is to have a vision of things to be done by the church. Save souls, do evangelism. And the rest, spreading the gospel, building with Jesus. It's not because there is much that we need to have an attitude of heart where we ourselves, we need much and more and more and more. It's a very, it's a, it's a subject that is very controversial today. But I think it's good to be able to talk about it freely and to catch the heart of the Lord and to be revealed the heart of Jesus and the heart of the Apostle Paul. Paul is not saying now you should not have salary from the church, you should not be remunerated from the church, you should be able to believe in God, trust Him and don't take anything. No, I don't think that's the heart there. But the heart of the Apostle Paul and the heart of the Lord is for me to tell you today that you must be very careful. Very careful how you use church money. And that you don't have a vision for the church to make you become prosperous. The church is not, is not, a way for pastors to prosper. I repeat that again. The church is not a way for pastors to prosper and to multiply what they have. Take a reasonable salary and believe God for the rest and trust Him. Amen. Don't you think that there should be an element of faith in the hearts and in the lives of pastors as they serve the Lord? Or do you think that the pastor must have much and much more and more and more and more and prosper and prosper and prosper? I don't believe that. 
If God wants you to prosper, that's another situation. That's acceptable. But it's not for us to use God's um, the church money for us to prosper. And we have seen that in the church today. Where pastors prosper because their church is big. There are many people and they can use church money for themselves as they want, as they like. That's not the heart of the Lord. Not the heart of the Lord. And that's how the prosperity message has brought destruction to the church. We need to be accountable to the Lord for the money that Christians give to the church. We should not, we should not use it as we want, lightly. Take it. Take whatever we want. No. That's not the heart of the Lord. That's not what the Apostle Paul is saying here. Amen. We cannot use church money for gain. And I want to remind you what the Apostle Paul has said in 1 Timothy chapter 6 concerning how we can be greedy. Use church, use godliness for a way to prosper, for a means of gain in chapter 6. We start from verse 5. Useless wranglings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth who suppose that godliness is a means of gain. From such withdraw yourself. Now godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and clothing and with these we shall be content. For those who desire to be rich fail into temptation and a snare. And into many foolish and harmful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil. Hallelujah. So we must be very careful about how we use church money. Integrity is part of the attitude of heart that we need to have. Integrity in finances, in our finances. So we see that we have the right, pastors have the right to receive a salary from the church. But we should not be able to use it for our gain and for our own interest and for us to become prosperous. We can't use church money like that. We must consider it very seriously. Amen. So another point that I want to share with you is, you know, there's a saying that says in the church today that pastors need to be full-time in ministry. Yes, it can be. I'm not saying it's not. But I don't believe that every single elder that is called of God needs to stop his work and enter into full-time ministry and be remunerated by the church. I don't believe so. It can be. It depends on the call of God. It depends. You know, there, there, are, there are young people today that have been called to, to, to do many things. So that I'm not setting another set of rules here. But I am saying that this is just not an, a rule where when someone is called of God, he's got to stop working. Even if he is 25 years old, 35 years old, or young man who can work. The Apostle Paul was working. He was making tents to be able to help others in ministry. Read it, you will see in the Bible. Amen? So it's not a rule where elders that come into ministry stop work. We've got so many elders in our local church here in Mauritius. We have about 30 churches. And many, there are many young elders who have proved themselves, called of God, but they still continue to work so that they can they not be a burden from, for the local church. So they, 
it's different. It's not another set of rules. It depends on many, many situations. How big is your church? If your church is 25 people or 20 people, I mean, is it rightful for you to, to just be full-time in ministry and not work? I, I think that, you know, we must be careful about all these things. Amen? Paul had the right to earn money from the church, even from the church of Corinth. He was in Antioch. That was his local church. But as an apostle, he was serving the Lord in many churches. And he didn't want to take money from the Corinthian church. But he had the right to. But he did not. That's why we must have the heart of the Lord. Know what is God's plan. And not just enter into some teaching or an understanding of how, of, of, of how we need to be remunerated from the local church. So, it depends on many things, the call of God. It depends on so, so many things. But let not just have a set mind where we, as we are called of God, we stop working. We must not be lazy pastors. We must be full of energy and serve the Lord. And if we have to work, we work. And if we have to take some money from the church, we do. So there is no set rule. But all of us pastors have the right to have a salary from the church. That is very clear from the Apostle Paul. Let me read quickly from verse 15 as we go along. And, and I will have a couple of things to say as we close. So we read from verse 15, but I have used none of these things. When he's talking in verse 15, after verse 14, that those who preach the gospel can live from the gospel. But he says, I have used none of these things, none of these prerogatives, nor have I written these things that it should be done so to me. For it would be better for me to die than that, than that anyone should make my boasting void. For if I preach the gospel, I have nothing to boast of. For necessity is laid upon me. Yes, woe is me if I do not preach the gospel. For if I do this willingly, I have a reward. But if against my will, I have been entrusted with a stewardship. I'm not going to talk about this part, but this is the part I want. To. What is my reward then? That when I preach the gospel, I may present the gospel of Christ without charge, that I may not abuse my authority in the gospel. Amen. He's got the right to do it, but at the same time, he feels that he must not take money from the church of Corinth. So, that's very important to consider. Paul, it was an honor for him to serve the Lord without asking anything. Amen. All right. Second thing I would like to close quickly is the personal finance of the pastor. How he use the money that God gives him. Firstly, let me say, let me put on the question, is, are our wives, do they know what is our salary? Do we, husband and wife together, work on that salary to do what the Lord calls us to do, husband and wife? Are the wives do they know about that salary? Do they know how much money we earn from the church? Do they know all the things that we spend? I think it is normal for a wife to know and to be part somehow and to have a say together how to use God's money. Amen? So we've got to be able to Take care of our family. Amen. And last and not the least, we've got to be generous, faithful, full of integrity in the way we deal with the finances, with the money that God gives us. The same way, the same way, be of full of integrity concerning the money that the church receives. And now, be of integrity in the way we use our own personal finances before the Lord. 
and to be an example and a model of faithfulness, of generosity. Amen? Even if people don't know what we give, but we need to be able to give generously, faithfully, and be men of integrity in our finances. Amen? Let me take just a couple of minutes to talk to you about the upcoming conference in the month of May, virtual international conference. It's going to be exciting. We have news from many, many places and continents and countries where there is like something in the air, something in the spirit that is catching momentum. And many pastors are responding. Many pastors are offering their help. Many pastors are subscribing. Things are moving. And we are so excited. That's why I would just encourage you to pray. To pray for this conference. And also to encourage others. Let them know about the conference. Pastors and leaders of churches. Try to mobilize others. Those whom you know. Let them know about the conference. And you yourself, subscribe if you have not. Subscribe to the conference and encourage others to subscribe because it's going to be a powerful conference for pastors and leaders of churches. On this note, I close and uh, I encourage you to hear what the Spirit is saying in these last days. So, we'll come again next Sunday. And in the meantime, may the grace of God be with you. And never forget that we love you. And Jesus loves you. Amen.